Again, it's all bullshit, folks, and it ain't good for you. The late George Carlin, one of my favorite comedians, once said. And it couldn't be more the truth. I did another video today, Iraq War, Obama illegally bypasses Congress. Again, just reminding the masses that all of this is illegal. It's as simple and plain as that. These are illegal, anti-constitutional actions being taken by the president today. And that is the bottom line. Rights aren't rights if someone can take them away. They're privileges. That's all we've ever had in this country, a bill of temporary privileges. And if you read the news even badly, you know that the list gets shorter and shorter. That's a direct quote from George Carlin in one of his final comedic stand-ups before he passed, I believe around the age of 70. A lot of people don't know that his father was actually a very gifted orator as, as he was. And I would argue, if not believe, that George Carlin, one of the greatest comedic political geniuses of our time, being able to use the art of comedy to portray a message of truth to the American people and those around the world, to prove the point of American excess, this surplus, this wealth that's been created that really has, in a lot of ways, only detached us from our own huma humanity, the real world, and what's actually good for us. Because, again, it's all bullshit, folks, and it ain't good for you. The Daily Beast reports exclusive Obama told lawmakers criticism of his Syria policy is horseshit. We're actually seeing the president agitated, which is kind of rare. We don't really get agitation from the president and thief that makes up Barack Hussein, insane in the membrane. This community organizer, Saul Alinsky follower, of course, is all a part of the game plan since the beginning to radically revolutionize America today, to socialize, I would argue, fascize the United Socialist States of America. All a part of the game plan. But the president getting agitated over the criticism of his anti-congressional and anti-constitutional efforts and war in Iraq at the moment. And also the open criticism of his intentional failed inaction in Syria. Again, this intentional failed inaction in Syria. This all a part of the plan. Again, the plan and the agenda has been for decades now to destabilize the Middle East for America's own self and selfish interests. That's been the program. It's all about economics. It's all about follow the money. Again, when Muammar Gaddafi tried to remove his country and the oil trade and that localized region away from U.S. dollar currency as the world reserve, he was indirectly murdered just a few months later. A lot of people don't know and don't realize that Muammar Gaddafi, also one of the most wealthy people on the planet at that time. Where did the money go? See how we never get the truth about that follow-up? Where did all that money go? Muammar Gaddafi, one of the most wealthy people on the face of the planet in the world. Again, I appreciate all of you tuning in to me today here at AMTV, again, August 12, 2014. If you like it, we'll continue doing these broadcasts live. And I would like to hear from you as well. Put your comment or question in the box. I'll try to get to it. According to the New American, Gaddafi's gold money plan would have devastated the dollar. It remains unclear exactly why or how the Gaddafi regime went from a model and an important ally to the next target for regime change in a period of just a few years. And it goes on to explain exactly what the motivation was for the indirect intervention of the American government to help arm the insurgents on the ground to kill Muammar Gaddafi. Again, the same thing we saw in Syria recently, the intentional failure, what has now spilled over to Iraq and has now caused a larger conflagration in the Middle East today. Whether or not we have an eye on the prize in Iraq, or it's Syria, or it's the murder of 1,000 plus and counting, I've seen estimates of 1,400 plus in Gaza today, is an Israeli invasion pitched around the idea that Hamas is using human shields. And not to say that they aren't, but really just that propaganda to push that agenda. Again, the two countries, the two allies, Israel and the United States, the only countries really bombing anyone right now. Obama bombing Iraq anti-constitutionally, and Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu bombing his neighbor, the Gaza Strip. 
and Palestinians. I mean, again, that's just the truth. That's just the reality. They can try to explain it to us any way they want. But I call that a humanitarian crisis. I call that a war. I actually give a shit about people dying overseas. But the president and CNN and the mainstream media, they'll justify it. They'll, yeah, be, yeah, you know, it's good to murder men, women, and children. If it's in the greater good of America, well, you know what? I call that a war crime. I call the bluff. It's not to say that Hamas or Hamas using children as human shields or Al-Qaeda or ISIS aren't bad. That they aren't bad, violent terrorist organizations. But much of them propelled and manufactured by the United States government themselves. Again, Al-Qaeda formed because of the United States. Osama bin Laden was actually fighting on our side at one time. Many Americans don't know that. And the same thing is happening in Syria today. The same thing is happening in Iraq. At a time of economic faltering, economic and political crisis, not just here in the United States, but Europe. This Ponzi scheme that makes up the American regime. Unbelievable, folks, but it is the absolute hard-hitting truth. There was also a story that I only caught on Reddit, and I was kind of surprised I didn't catch it. Notice how the mainstream media buries this. Prince Bandar bin Sultan, head of Saudi intelligence, and I've been looking to confirm this, help me out to confirm this, has been killed, allegedly, according to Press TV and also Zero Hedge which might come as a surprise because the mainstream media hasn't even covered this story. Again, Prince Bandar bin Sultan linked to the Bushes here in the United States. Some have linked him as one of the responsible individuals for the September 11th terror attacks. And some of the recent terror events, namely in Ghouta, recently the chemical attack in Syria that we saw some odd months ago. Dead. You didn't hear about this on CNN, did you? I didn't. In the aftermath of the disastrous for both the U.S. and Saudi Arabia false flag campaign to replace the Syrian regime with one which would be amenable to allowing a Qatari gas pipeline to pass underneath the Al-Qaeda rebel infested country, there were numerous rumors that the reign of Saudi's infamous former ambassador to the United States and current intelligence chief, Prince Bandar Bush bin Sultan, the man who we suggested was the puppet master behind the entire failed operation, had come to an end. Some two months ago, the Shia Post reported that news sources announced the chief of the Saudi spying apparatus, Bandar bin Sultan, has been dismissed. Dead. Since creation of crisis in Syria by Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and Turkey, Bandar bin Sultan's name has been heard time and time again in tandem with the Syria crisis. Bandar bin Sultan injected with poison, according to Press TV. Saudi Arabia's spy master Prince Bandar bin Sultan bin Abdulaziz has been injected with an incurable poison, a Lebanese media report says. Some Lebanese media outlets quoted Saudi sources as saying that the prince was injected with an unknown kind of poison. Again, I got to question the timing of this. The linkage to the bushes, the link to political timing here in the United States. Why shut this guy up now, and who could get that close to this individual to poison Bandar bin Sultan? Medical doctors say various methods of treatment have failed to restore him to health over the past few months. This has partly been rumor, part skepticism, But based on numerous sources today, appears to be the truth and the reality. Prince Bandar bin Sultan murdered, injected with poison, according to Press TV. Again, please help us corroborate that here at AMTV. We did an exclusive special report on this months and months ago. August 31st, just about a year ago, in 2013, titled, Syria Saudi Prince Bandar Behind the Chemical Attacks in Ghouta in Syria with over a hundred thousand plus views and growing. Again, this individual part of great scandal connected not just to the September 11, 2001 terror attacks, but the Bush administration, the Bush family here in the United States. 
pretty timely and unbelievable that this individual be poisoned now. And the question that we have to ask is thinking individuals is why. Again, Americans fail to do critical thinking. You're called a conspiracy theorist. You're called a nut if you think. George Carlin used to talk about this a lot as well. He would say, you know, Americans fail to think. They're not taught to think. You're only programmed. You're only reprogrammed by the system itself, whether or not this is education here in the United States of America or it is the media or it's the Disney Channel before you can barely speak, all programming you into a particular frame of mind and pitching a particular frame of reference and a particular narrative all to control your actions and your behavior. Again, you go to college, they don't teach you how to start your own business. They don't teach you how to work for your, yourself. They teach you how to work for other people. They teach you how to work and rely on the system that makes up too big to fail, although it often does government today, so that you can suck the teat of an insolvent enterprise in a government that is malfeasant in every way, that is diseased structurally at the core, that is an upside-down pyramid scheme that has already failed. Trillions and trillions of dollars spent in worthless bailouts to the criminal elite that caused the collapse in the first place. This is an engineered and intentional wealth transfer, all a byproduct of manufactured events. Some events, namely the September 11, 2001 terror attacks. Again, whether you believe the conspiracy angle or not, the United States federal government, the Federal Reserve, and officials responded in the exact way needed to create the largest bubble in the history of the world, only to collapse our great nation, and only to reproduce and manufacture even more bailouts to blow up an even greater, more aggressive, violent bubble today, which is exactly what we have. That is just the reality. That is not speculation. That is what we have. I saw a report yesterday, a chart that I was reading that showed that businesses, this has gone inverse now, more businesses are closing in 2014 than are actually starting new ones. Again, small business does the majority of hiring in the economy today. How can the economy be growing, you ask, if more businesses are closing their doors than actually starting or growing? And the answer to that is they're not. We actually have negative growth as, as reported in the first quarter with the GDP print, the post print that nobody cares about that the mainstream media buries. We actually have negative growth. We actually have a contracting economy at the time when the dollar is being printed to infinity to create inflation, or at least an attempt at inflation. Although there's much trouble around this, as we see in Europe, the fears are actually deflationary. We have also been experiencing deflation here in the United States, which is why they're printing currency into infinity. It's why we've had QE1, QE2, QE3, Operation Twist, and God knows what else. It's why the Federal Reserve is buying mortgage-backed securities, their own debt, and the rest of the world is running for their frigging lives. It's why the BRICS nations, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, are starting their own ancillary competitor World Bank their own competitor version of the International Monetary Fund. Again, this is what Muammar Gaddafi was trying to do, but America killed him. You see, America drops bombs anytime a independent sovereign nation tries to compete with the insolvent beast that makes up the United States today. Again, bankrupt in every way. That not my opinion, just the reality. The debt has gone out more under Obama than any other president in the history of America combined in just his tenure. That's real. That's the truth. That's the reality. And guess what, America? It is unsustainable. That is where we're headed, and that's the reality of today. But again, you're a conspiracy theorist if you do critical thinking. If you question things like MH Flight 17, notice how the mainstream media has gone dark on that. Well, Ron Paul discussed it yesterday. He said the U.S. is likely hiding the truth. Yeah, no shit, Ron Paul, on downed Malaysian flight MH17. Again, I called bullshit on this from the very beginning, as is I called bullshit on flight MH370, which in my opinion and much of the evidence begs that that plane was hijacked. But again, the mainstream media has gone dark on that. Notice that? They still haven't found the plane. Can't find it anywhere. Nor have they found any evidence to link Russia to the downing of flight MH17. It's all bullshit, folks, and it ain't good for you. You see, the mainstream media goes dark when it doesn't fit their agenda and it doesn't fit their narrative. Again, the mainstream media, a statist organization propelled by the financial elite in Washington and on Wall Street today. That's all they are. 
Why do you think we have a market in the alternative media? Why do you think I started AMTV five years ago out of my basement? Because I knew there was a need for truth. This is the reality. And again, folks, it's all bullshit, and it ain't good for you. Former Congressman Ron Paul said the U.S. knows more than it is telling about the Malaysian aircraft that crashed in eastern Ukraine last month, killing 298 people on board and seriously damaging U.S.-Russian relations in the process. In an effort to inject some balance of opinion, not to mention pure sanity, into the ongoing debate over what happened to Malaysian flight MH17, Ron Paul is convinced that the U.S. government is withholding the truth on the catastrophe. You must watch my videos. The U.S. government has grown strangely quiet on the accusation that it was Russia or her allies that brought down the Malaysian airliner with a Buke anti-aircraft missile, Paul said on his news website on Thursday. Again, no shit, Ron Paul. And the good American people, the ones that are informed, you tuning in know the truth. You think critically. You ask questions. And you know what? If you're considered a conspiracy theorist for asking questions, let it be. Let it be. Again, the Gulf of Tonkin, folks, that was a false flag event. Our approach to Vietnam, all propelled and catalyzed by a false flag event. That has all come out in history, in the history books, all of that declassified. But hey, it couldn't happen again. The government's not going to lie to you. The mainstream media is not going to you know, tell you the truth. It's all bullshit, and it ain't good for you. So many stories, so many countless scandals, so many anti-congressional, anti-freedom, anti-constitutional acts from this president at the head of the White House today. Again, a dictator, a king who has crowned himself, not a president. A president respects the branches of government, respects Congress, respects the Senate, respects the people. Again, the people elect these people as representatives, supposedly. But freedom isn't free, folks. Freedom isn't free. As George Carlin pointed out, I keep referencing him today. There's no such thing as freedom in America. There's only temporary privileges. And you'll see how quickly they're taken away the moment it becomes inconvenient for the financial and political elite in Washington, D.C. and on Wall Street today. Just like during World War II, they rounded up the Japanese Americans because of the color of their skin. They'll do the same again in this next global war, this next conflict, this next conflagration in the Middle East. The President of the United States has already laid the framework today. It is already in process. The NDAA, the National Defense Authorization Act, another anti-constitutional act, another executive order provides that framework to detain innocent Americans without judge, trial, or jury. This is the truth. And this is the reality behind the agenda that makes up the political system today. I'm Christopher Green. Get it out everywhere. Make it viral. Hard-hitting it in your face. And click the link below to support our sponsor. <laughs>